Hello, everybody. Now, it's Kirsty from Focus speaking. Hopefully, you can all hear me. I am going to apologise in advance um, if I click my way around my um, presentation and I get a bit tangled. Even though I've been practising this, I have managed to get myself tangled in it every single time. Um, so, we'll get started. Oh, speak of the issue. <laughs> New features in Time Track 3.2.35. The things that we will cover today. So today I'd like to talk about our two new licensing models. We have our subcontracting model and our schedule only license model. These do have different pricing rules against them, um, which I will talk about as we get to them. Uh, I'd like to discuss managing staff within Time Track Mobile, which includes using work groups and assigning time to others. We have a new feature called clocking on and off, um, which is quite cool, very simple in how it's used, um, but quite effective. Uh, we also have the ability to travel home from our last appointment for the day. I'd like to uh, quickly demonstrate some customizable checklist reports. We've got a new feature of creating job quotes within TimeTrack Mobile. Uh, we can now issue from within TimeTrack Mobile invoices and quote forms via emails. We have a brand new serviceable units screen in TimeTrack Professional. And I'd like to talk about the updates that we have in our knowledge base. I'm going to tentatively attempt to shift us on to the next thing here. <laughs> and new licensing modules. Yay, it worked. Schedule only licenses. This user cannot log into either TimeTrack Professional or TimeTrack Mobile. But they can be booked in for work. And other users um, who are group admins can add time and materials against the schedule only user. So this is a different pricing model. It's half the price of a normal license. The annual licensing fee is the same though. Um, all of the time and materials can be posted back to a job. So this is perfect for an apprentice. If you need to book in and charge out the use of company vehicles or machinery um, that gets used on a job, then this is the kind of licensing that you would look at purchasing. The other one that we have is our subcontracting license. So this has a little bit of um, extra behaviour behind the scenes. So this is for your true subcontractors who would issue you a invoice after they've completed their work. So they're set up um, as a user. Against the user, they are set up against a creditor account and they must have a preloaded disbursement set up against them. What happens is when an appointment is created for your subcontractor, it creates a purchase order back in EXO with the one line of the preloaded disbursement. And when the invoice comes through from the subcontractor, the purchase order would go through its normal process um, in EXO. So I have a very brief video here of how this would work. Nope. <laughs> Let me just get back to that screen. All right, we're off. Okay, so we're creating our appointment. Um, in this instance, my subcontractor is already created in the admin console. And he's going to install a new kitchen. Now, it says here that he's my subcontractor. And I get a new option here to create a purchase order so I can create a brand new one. Or if there's an existing one against the job, I could have selected that. So this would, if it was, if I was picking the existing um, purchase order, it would add a second line to that purchase order. This is like, you know, in a kitchen. Here's this preloaded disbursement. And if we click save, it creates the appointment. And in EXO, against our job, install new kitchen, against the purchases tab, we can now see our new purchase order for our subcontractor. 
and you can see the single line against it. From the mobile perspective, when the subcontractor logs in, he can have a very limited visibility, so he could see just his jobs, and he can see just his appointments, and depending on the permissions that he gets, he cannot do anything with that appointment other than to go to it. Right. Now we're going to move on to managing staff in mobile. So now TimeTrack Mobile has the ability to set up work groups. Work groups have been available um, in TimeTrack Professional for quite some time. Um, so it's basically a calendar that belongs to a group of users and you sort of shift them around um, if your users shift around to doing different types of work or they work in different teams. Uh, so this is great if you've got a team of people working um, heading out to the same site to do a significant piece of work or two or three people going out in routines that would, you know, um, you would want to see and book them in at the same time. So we've added in the work groups into mobile as well. The functionality is a little bit different, it's a bit cleverer, um, but they're very flexible and very easy to use in mobile. So again, another video of a work group and this time I'll click the right button. So up the top there we've got a new icon, little person, and that brings us to our Manage Work Groups screen. Greg at the moment has no work groups. By clicking the plus button I can enter in the work group name and once I've got a work group established I can add in my users. It's Monday, Tim's obviously a little bit reluctant to join the team. So that expands out my work group. Now I can add more users on the fly if required. Now just going to, uh, hopefully, if I can stop this quickly enough, pause this here. This is a clocking on feature as well. So I'm going to just quickly discuss this. When the user comes in in the morning, they can clock on and this will register them starting their day. Now for the work group, this also um, allows the one user who's going out with the team, and he might be the only one with a tablet, um, to clock on all other work group users. Clocking on is not the same as checking in, clocking on is they're starting their day. So what this will do if we go back to managing our work groups up in the top there, is we'll show that all of our users are now clocked on. Now in the screen we can go into each of those users' calendars, we could fill their day or we could remove them from our work group or delete the entire work group if we wanted to. The cool behaviour with this is that the person who's logged in, when he creates a time entry, it creates a time entry for each of his work group members at the same time. So this makes it very good if you do have a team leader going out with potentially um, apprentices and things like that, he can control that. So when he's in his time entry screen, he would run through the normal process, but he will get warned this time entry will also be created for the members of his work group. If he clicks save, that will just go ahead and save those time entries. If he wants to make changes, he can click save and add time entries for other users. And that will show his work group users ticked on by default, and he can tick those off. Or he can add Harrison, for example, who joined us unexpectedly, and create that time entry for him in the screen as well. And if we come into the time entries here, you'll be able to see that all four time entries have been created against the right user. So clocking on and off. Clocking on and off is for our clients who have their staff out in the field just logging in actual time and materials used on the job, and they're not actually filling in any of the gaps during their day. 
this is fantastic for organisations that are using um, Time Track to import time into payroll systems where they want to capture when they started working and when they actually finished working. So clocking in logs the time that the user starts work, which is like punching in a card. The user goes about their day checking in and out of jobs for clients. And then at the end of the day, they clock out before they actually head home. So as I demonstrated before, the clocking in and out is available for work groups as well as just the logged in user. So if the logged in user wasn't belonging to a work group or wasn't creating their own work group, then they could use the normal clock in and clock out. Against um, the clocking in and out, we also have um, what we would fill those gaps in automatically created for them. So on clock out, um, the gaps would be filled with whatever um, non-billable status we would set up for you. So moving on from that, we've got our checklist reports. So our checklists we've had in Time Track for quite a while. Uh, we now have the ability to create the checklist PDFs and, and they have their own reports now and they can be edited within our Time Track report writer. Um, so this means that we now have the ability to format the checklists reports before they get sent out to clients or sent internally. We do have some limitations around our advanced checklist report where images are embedded into the report and signatures are captured. Um, but those we'd, we'd discuss with you um, at the time. So I'm just going to quickly shift my screen so that you can see the admin console. And I'm going to show you the reports um, menu item here. And you can see here that we've got lots and lots of different types of checklist reports. Um, all of our reports have changed their behaviour, so they can all be edited somewhat. We also have our ability to create our quote forms, which can mirror your EXO quote forms. And we can add in um, invoice forms as well. So all of these um, can be edited from within the admin console and it actually opens up the time track report writer. Uh, so th these are then assigned to a checklist and the checklist would use the correct layout, PDF layout um, for that. Um, that particular checklist. So you can have any number of these reports now to match the type of um, checklist that you're um, outputting to your clients. Ooh, check it out. Ah, foiled. I do apologise. For some reason, PowerPoint and I are not friends. Okay, so here's an example of a customised checklist. So we can embed in your logo, we can put in your fonts and your colours, and we can edit the layout of the results as well. Again, there are restrictions around the custom, um, the advanced one. So moving on from that, quoting jobs in mobile. So this is this is a pretty big deal. Um, if you have a team of people who would actually go out and be asked to produce a quote while they're out on site, then quoting jobs in mobile is perfect. Um, it enables the users to add lines to a new quote job um, and email the clients the quote. Um, like I said before, your quote forms can be set up in Time Track Report Writer and they can look exactly like your EXO quote forms. So we have a web video here of how a job quote works, or a quoting job works. Okay, so if we come into our jobs, we get the option to choose a add quote job. Sorry, my screen shifted there. We can select our client that we're visiting. We're picking on Courtney today. And this brings up the job quote template. You would do all the usual things for adding a job in mobile um, here. So this is the behavior of creating a job from a template is the same. You would enter in all of your usual fields.
and you can expand out your options here to pop on a quote date. Now if you needed to update any of these other fields, you'd just come through and do that and then click save. So this is now in our job. So my template had quote lines against it and they've been copied into my new job. And here I've got labour at 10 hours. So the work that I'm quoting is not for 10 hours worth of work, so I'm going to update my quantity here. And I'm going to add more quote lines to this. So these do write the quote lines back to job costing on the quote budget tab. And I'm going to add some more stock. Once you're happy with that, you can then see at the top next to the quote lines um, the full total and then you can send the quote. You can update the job status, you can choose your quote form if you've got more than one and you would enter in your client's email address. And that runs away and sends the email out. So I'll just reiterate, these lines do end up on the job in the quote budget tab so that if your team are quoting out on the field, those users um, in, in EXO can still see those quote lines. And here is an example of um, what might come through in the quote. So emailing forms in mobile. Users can now email invoices and quote forms within TimeTrack Mobile and you can have any number of those as well. These forms are created within the TimeTrack Report Writer and they'll look at the EXO database. So they can be formatted to look just like your invoice or quote that you would have had come out of EXO. Um, and if you've got more than one your TimeTrack Mobile users can select um, from a list of forms which ones they would like. To produce. And here's just a quick screenshot of a form that we have. And you would have these set up sort of to match your, your EXO ones. Moving on to serviceable units. So in this version of TimeTrack, we've added a full screen in TimeTrack Professional dedicated to serviceable units. It shows all the key serviceable unit fields and it can be filtered and organised within that screen. The serviceable unit can now be assigned to a debtor account, so it can be an unassigned serviceable unit. It can have new jobs created against it whilst within the unit. You can see the history notes, regular notes as well. We've also added um, updates to the knowledge base which allows users to assign articles while they're in the serviceable unit. So let me drive this one here for you. So I'm in Time Track Professional here. I've got a new link up the top called Serviceable Units and it opens up the Serviceable Unit um, tab. Now from that screen I can add a brand new serviceable unit or I could pop the whole screen out which is what I'll do here. So this you can see that we've got all of these columns now, the columns are orderable and filterable. I have here my serviceable unit, it's assigned at the moment to Jasmine. Um, I could now unassign it, so if the serviceable unit moves from one debtor account to the next. I can view any custom fields that you may have for your serviceable units. I can see all related jobs and I could add a brand new job from scratch within here. I can see our contact history notes and I can edit them or delete them if I've got the right permissions. I can see all knowledge base articles in here. I can add attachments to my serviceable unit and I can write notes to my serviceable unit. I 
I will come back to serviceable units and the filtering of the grids um, for you sort of towards the end of this, um, but we'll, we'll move on to this tab here. The updates to the knowledge base. So our knowledge base functionality has grown. A knowledge base um, still has the opportunity to have an article or a question. Um, historically, the article could relate to another article, to a client, a contact, a job, a task if task track is installed and we've added the ability to relate it now to a serviceable unit and or a stock item. Uh, the serviceable unit can have the article linked from within the serviceable unit screen, but because in time track we don't actually have a stock item screen, you have to link it to the stock item from within the knowledge base. Now, all of these new related items flow across both time track professional and time track mobile. So here's my video of my hazard register, which is a knowledge base. Next to it I have another knowledge base called knowledge base. And you can see from the heading there we're in hazard, hazard register. This is my article, Airflow. And if I drill into my article, you can see here I've got some PDFs attached to it and I've got some related items. So I've got some serviceable units and a stock item that this is um, related to. If I edit my article, I don't, I could have edited in some descriptions here, but my attachments will do the work for me. And I can see here that I've got my related items. So I've got my serviceable units and in my stock item. If I click on the add option, I can add it now, more relations as, as required. So there can be any number of these relations. You can be related to any number of jobs, contacts, clients, tasks, serviceable units, and stock items. The search screen is very similar for each of these items. In this case, you'd search on your stock item. And you basically click OK. And it's added it to my knowledge base. So you can see here the related items in this screen. If I come into Time Track Mobile, from their main screen, they may be able to see Hazard Register. And they could come into that article. And they can view the description, the attachments, and the related items. Or they could add a comment. Or if it is um, that they're coming in from a different perspective and they're actually looking at the stock items somewhere within Time Track Mobile, or the client or the job, um, it will show a knowledge base and the number of articles that are related against it, bringing them back to the same screen. So the estimated date of delivery for the release version is in early September. We're looking the first week of September at this point. Before I bring this to a close, I would like to show you the new grids for those users who don't yet have these grids within Time Track Professional. So you can see here that Jobs um, is its own panel now. It used to be a very small, narrow panel, and it is now much larger. Clients also have the same panel. I've demonstrated serviceable units and contacts as well. And what we can do with these is we can drag this panel out or we could open it up in its own screen. This also means that these columns are drag and drop. We can filter or if we would like to add quite a custom filter, we can come down to any of these panels here and click on the Create Filter option. And these are quite intuitive. Email begins. If you select on that, you can choose something here. And it will give you the option to enter in a value here. So a meaningful example, for example here, is we could have a filter here that all jobs where Bridget is the job manager. And then we could edit the filter here as well. And we could have that all statuses 
are in progress. So we're not excluding any statuses in here unless we set up a filter to do so. We also have a new column here that will give you the account of appointments against the job. So see here, we can see here that this job here has two appointments against it. So that's a new option there as well. Now these filters can be quickly changed and removed if required. So we're moving all of our sort of key data fields into here and moving forward um, we'll be bringing tasks into a similar panel. Just in case you're not quite sure how I got to my knowledge bases, I'll reiterate that here. They become links along the top of the screen here. I'm hoping everybody can see me hovering, if not my mouse. Um, and if I click on one of those, the knowledge bases will open up into where the calendar would be. If you needed to get back to the calendar, you just click on time track. We also have, and it is not in our um, in this documentation, but it will be in the released version, new timesheet verification reports. So these are quite different. The filters are all exactly the same. The difference is we are now containing the disbursements within our reports that are directly on a job. The changes have also been made to our timesheet verification by user report. So we can see the disbursements as well as the time entries. Here's a perfect example here. Our minimum charge is a disbursement and we can now see that. And there is no task associated to this. This is time on a job. So I thank you very much for your time this afternoon. If you do have any questions, please email them through to support at exosoft.net.nz. Let me just make sure that I have got the right email there. Support at exosoft.net.nz. Um, and one of the team will get back to you to answer any of your questions, most likely myself. Um, if you are wanting to discuss how this might work for your business um, in particular, then you're most welcome to call us or email us and we can pick up the phone and have a catch up with you and work out how this could best work for you. Um, and if you would like to organise an update, again, contact us and um, we'll make sure that you're on our list of people to let you know as soon as the released version becomes available. So once again, thank you very much and hopefully I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.